from United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. It is fished every day and in nearly every ocean on the planet. It is served in trendy restaurants around the world and in tin cans for school lunches. They're among the most valuable commodities in the ocean. It's tuna. Yellowfin, big eye, albacore, and skipjack. 4.5 million tons of tuna are caught each year, and nearly half of the global supply is caught in the Western and Central Pacific. It's a $5 billion a year industry and an economic lifeline for dozens of small island nations. But for how much longer? People consider the ocean an endless bounty, but the ocean is far from unlimited. Andrew Hudson is an ocean management expert with the United Nations Development Program. The Pacific is so dependent on these fisheries resources that a collapse could be devastating. And it might be decades for them to recover from that, if at all. The fisheries of the Western and Central Pacific cover 40 million square kilometers. It's a vast area populated by small island countries, which, according to international law, own all of the fish within 200 miles of their coastline. But their fishing grounds are a target for ocean thieves. So, 17 of the countries formed an alliance to protect their most valuable asset, tuna. Based on the Solomon Islands, a multinational task force for the Pacific Islands Foreign Fisheries Agency is tracking some 2,000 commercial ships, says Steve Masika. It's an interesting track. It's not licensed, so it should not be doing those tracks. This is definitely not innocent passage. Each ship transmits a signal that is similar to an aircraft transponder, which provides vital clues as to whether the boat is operating legally. Despite these efforts, in the past 10 years, overall catch rates, both illegal and legitimate, have more than doubled. And while skipjack are still abundant, the prized bluefin is already overfished, and big eye and yellowfin stocks are declining. That's why the UN Development Programme has worked with small island countries to bring in a fisheries convention and to manage fish stocks. Nowhere are people more protective of their fisheries than in the Western and Central Pacific. It's a way of life. It defines their culture. It's how islanders make their living and feed their families. And without it, everything falls apart. In the coastal village of Noro in the Solomon Islands, the morning commute consists of islanders boarding the company van bound for the sole tuna processing plant. How many tons for today? 60 tons. 25-year-old Hati Matamaru is one of 1,700 Solomon Islanders making a living at the Seoul tuna processing plant. Yeah, nice cleaning, maintaining this one. It's really good. Here, 100 metric tons of tuna are skinned, deboned, processed, canned, and packaged every single day. This canary, it's really important to, to the people here, to the lives, to their families, and to the surrounding communities as well. We are worried if the tuna stock is gone, yeah, because the job here depends very much on the fish that we have in our waters. For now, the Western and Central Pacific is still the most productive fishery on the planet. But the risk of depleting stocks of tuna sends a signal that has to be heeded. We know very well now, and the ocean is telling us very clearly, that we need to find more sustainable approaches to ocean utilization. We know that the oceans are talking to us. Their message is that if we listen, they will continue to provide for generations to come. This report was produced by Patrick Fries for the United Nations.